Welcome to my lecture online. Now let's talk about theorems. What do we need theorems for? Well, they can be used to prove proofs. But before we can use theorems, they need to be proven themselves. Now, we're going to assume that they've already been proven so we can use them. We don't have to prove them anymore. But let's take a look at some of the theorems that we're going to need in order to prove our proofs. Well, what is a theorem? A theorem is a statement that can be proven. Okay. Once proven, it can be used in other proofs, and that's the key. We're just going to assume, them, assume that they've been proven already, and we're just going to use them. The six that we've listed here are some of the more common proofs or common theorems that we need to use. First of all, congruence of segments. Well, we have three different kinds. We have reflexive, symmetric, and transitive. Now, the first two are not very useful. Reflexive, for any segment, we can say that if we have a segment or a line segment AB, that the, that the line segment AB is congruent to the line segment AB. I know that needs to be proven once, and then after that, we probably don't use it much anymore. The symmetric proof is that if we have a line segment AB that is congruent to line segment CD, then we can assume that the line segment CD is congruent to the line segment AB. That seems self-explanatory, but in some cases in mathematics, things like that need to be proven. But what's really useful for us is the following. Let's say we have three line segments. We have the line segment AB being congruent to line segment BC, and the line segment BC is congruent to the line segment CD. Then we can conclude that the line segment AB is congruent to the line segment CD. Graphically, let's take a look at that. Here we have three line segments, AB, BC, and CD. If AB is congruent to BC and BC is congruent to CD, then line segment AB must be congruent to line segment CD. And there's our first theorem. The second theorem is the same thing, but now with angles, congruence of angles. And again, we're all going to use the, trans the transitive uh, theorem, which says that if the measure of angle 1 equals the measure of angle 2, and the measure of angle 2 equals the measure of angle 3, then the measure of angle 1 must equal the measure of angle 3. Or in congruence, and that's what the theorem says, if angle 1 is congruent to angle, to angle 2, and angle 2 is congruent to angle 3, then angle 1 must be congruent to angle 3. And of course, if they're congruent, then their angle measures are the same, and that's how we can use it. The third theorem, congruence or right angle theorem. Well, here it says that all right angles are congruent. That's because all right angles have an angle measure of 90 degrees, and since they all have the same angle measure, they must all be congruent. So regardless as to the orientation of the right angle, they all have a measure of 90 degrees, therefore, by, by theorem, they're all congruent. Theorem 4, congruent supplements. If two angles are supplementary to the same angle, then they are congruent. So here we have an example. Let's say that angle 1 is supplementary to angle 3, and angle 2 is supplementary to angle 3, then angle 1 and angle 2 must be congruent. In other words, they must have the same angle measure. Theorem 5, congruent complements. If two angles are complementary to the same angle, then they are congruent. So it works for supplementary angles. It also works exactly the same for complementary angles. Here we can say that if angle 1 is complementary to angle 3, and angle 2 is complementary to angle 3, well, in other words, if the sum of the two measures add up to 90 degrees, then angle 1 must be congruent to angle 2. They must have the same angle measure. And finally, congruent vertical angles. All vertical angles are congruent. Here we have an example. We have two lines that intersect. The opposing or opposite angles are congruent because they're vertical angles. And if they're vertical angles, they must be, con they must be congruent. So those are the six theorems that come in really handy when we try to prove proofs in geometry. And that's how it's done.